everyone. Welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And today um, we're taping our special early Festivus uh, airing of grievance. <laughs> airing of grievances show. Oh. Um, I you guess know. for people who are not familiar with it, because I had to YouTube it again this morning. I, it originally for the rest of us. from uh, <laughs> Seinfeld. Seinfeld, you know, yeah. and it was George's dad who had his own Christmas tradition. I wanted to bring in a poll. I thought about us. finding a picture of a poll, and then I was like, okay, yeah. let's not go over the top. Um, and we were going to wear little cute Christmas yeah. hats, but we didn't get around to that, but we did Look, both get the red festive. memo. <laughs> like, um, so, yeah. You know, as much as it's a wonderful time of the year and we should be celebrating all sorts of wonderful, warm and fuzzy things, why not do the Festivus thing and do some airing of grievances? So we both just came up with a little list and I bet there's going to be overlap. And um, I, I'm sure there will be. And I kind of try to frame them in. in yeah, your list was a little different than me. To, uh, you know, I mean, we like to criticize things here, but really, you know, it's not just random. No. Um, but I tend to be the kind of person who tries to focus on the positive and the hopeful. So it was actually kind of hard for me. Mine to, was just to, based on things I've, like literally things from the last week. Well, so that's, it's not like these are the only things that I have grievances right? with. These are just the most recent and most well, there was that, and then I was like, "But wait, these are the things we talk about on our show all the time." <laughs> but so that's okay. apparently, it'll every be fun. Week here at Men's Talk is a airing it, of the grievances. grievances. <laughs> um, if you, you know, if you're watching on Facebook and uh, you have any ideas of your grievances, feel free to post away. Not that either of us can see well enough to read that, but um, so I, I'll go first. Um, and most of mine, like I said, were based on either uh, personal things that happened or. Um, things I read in the paper just over the last few days. Um, my first one that I get was misleading data regarding wages. And it just drives me crazy. So there was a union leader article. I know you were out of town for over the weekend. You were in like, I what? was, I have no idea what happened here. I'm sure they probably released <laughs> the Lori's list, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, you know, every pothole has been fixed. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's been a Christmas miracle. Um, while I've been <laughs> on Sunday's paper, there was an article, which is a very legitimate subject matter, um, no vacancy housing crunch has shelters full and homeless camps growing. And it was about, you know, who's homeless and how difficult it is for some of these people to uh, find housing. And, um, and there are some, there are some data points that are real, that really are true. Um, I guess in New Hampshire, according to the New Hampshire Finance Authority, uh, the median gross rent statewide, now keep in mind that's statewide, for a two bedroom um, apartment is $1,347, which I admit is a lot of money. Um, and there's a vacancy rest rate of less, less than, than 1%, 1%, which is so, incredible. So, like, I get it. that It is a huge issue. There's, this isn't something, I, I, this isn't meant to make, make fun of that issue. But in the same article, it says, according to federal guidelines, someone would have to earn $22 an hour to afford a two-bedroom apartment in New Hampshire. And I thought about it, and I'm like, oh, give me a break. I know people who live by themselves who don't make $22 an hour and they're fine. They're not starving to death. And then I got to thinking about it. And I'm like, what is that based on? And why does somebody making one person need a two-bedroom apartment? And, you know, Dan and I talked back and forth. And, okay, so you could have a single parent with kids. Okay, well, then it's the government's problem. Because you know what? The government puts restrictions on who can live where. Did you know that, like, if you have a boy child and a girl child, you have to have separate bedrooms for them. So what? Yeah. So According to whom? The, the government. So Really? So, Ooh, think about it. So, so many grievances once Tammy's done. I, I know. Just I, really, right. I just don't <laughs> think I want the government. Sitting. There's a law that says there a, is. It's a, like it's a some brother crazy, and his sister might a, over a certain share, age can't uh, share a room or some craziness. That, like that. ought to be a law. This is going to be think my think about grievance. it. So you can have a um, let's say you do have a single mom with two children. You know, two a ten year old boy and a nine year old girl, and they're they can't they're living in a shelter. I don't know about you, but if they want to live in a studio apartment because that's all they can afford, get the heck out of their way and let them live someplace. Well, tell me, Tammy, <laughs> is it true or is it not true that more regulation makes things more expensive? It does. Expensive? It makes more expensive. So perhaps do maybe you the think... government could cr cut it back a little bit. So yeah, twenty-two dollars an hour for one person, right? Full time, I presume. So that really is two people only earning $11 an hour, right. which isn't what people in New Hampshire are making. Sorry, adults in New Hampshire are not making minimum wage. That's the other one that drives me nuts. They just don't make minimum wage in New Hampshire. Um, so $45,000 a year sounds like a lot of money to have to be able to afford housing. 
It, it you know, it does. For one. Yes. But that's one person in a two bedroom. That's not that's not how the world works. Everybody knows if you're you're gonna have. I never had lived in a two bedroom when it was just one person. Right. Right. But you know, back to the single mom thing. Yeah. But yes, let's let's focus on the 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 lies part that you said yes. there because that was actually one of mine <laughs> as well. Is just this sort of idea that everyone everyone seems to be lying, you know. I think I talked about this either or, on, or, on or using words that are borderline lie, but you can see that it's intentional. No, it's, it's <laughs> some of it is just well, some of it is straight up lying. Some of it is uh, you propaganda. mean like the like the the federal government lying about the Russia investigation oh, yeah. or whether or not the CIA collects intelligence on the legislature. I mean, like, I have to say, I love it because in some ways, for me, twenty nineteen is just hopefully a wake peak, up peak idiotocracy right? uh, meant in the way that you know the movie is because. We can't go on like no, this. No, I just. I, 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 I listen. I heard a thing. Um, somebody. I don't remember what it was. Dave Smith or somebody. Somebody. Some podcast. And they were talking about um the CIA. And this was on the Russia, the Russia investigation. Right? And he said, you know, Central Intelligence Agency was set up to find intelligence. For the executive and legislative branches, not against the, them. So, like, so what is the CIA doing? They're collecting intelligence and keeping it for just the CIA? I don't really well, think that's well, what they were supposed to be there for. No, first of all, we know that's not what they were supposed to do. But here's what happens, right? So I believe when you start with the wrong incentives... Everything that flows from there is tainted, yeah. right? So that's why I believe taxation is theft. Look, because, taxation is theft was on my list! <laughs> because uh, you're starting with the premise that one group of people is allowed to take your money to spend on things that you don't want them to spend money on, right? So nothing good is going to flow from there because you're taking people's money and using them in ways that they don't like. So... <laughs> this is fun. So... From there, with the national intelligence agencies and from this whole national security surveillance, military industrial surveillance complex, you know, we can string together a whole bunch of words. But basically, let's say that once you start spying on people yep. and because Congress failed to do their job back in the day when people like Edward Snowden came forward, hero, no one wants to hear it, but you know what, if we had listened to him 10 years ago, we wouldn't be in this situation right now. Because what happens when things flow from a bad action, meaning suddenly you're spying on everyone. So what are you going to do? Everyone. I mean, I imagine yeah. DC is just full of people who are all spying on their spouses, spying on their neighbors, blackmailing yeah, each other. Yep, yep. I mean, it has to, beyond a swamp, be a cesspool at this stage, yep. right? And when they talk about national security, they're not talking about us, guys. No. They're not talking about the citizens of America. Right. They are talking about how... Do they protect the state? Whether you want to call it the deep state, the deep state, the shallow state. I think that's my thing I for twenty twenty. I don't even care. I mean, the point is, it is deep by this stage because the bureaucracy is out of control. Yeah. But with Russia Gate specifically, I mean, I have it on here too. I put it under the category of the assault on free speech. Mm -hmm. But I just finished a book by the Rolling Stone uh, journalist called Matt Tiabi. Yeah, yeah. And it's called Hate Inc. Um, and it's really a good read if you want to understand how the media is manipulating you. Because with something like Russiagate, what we see at the moment is they're, it's not even so much sometimes that they're lying to us. They just pick what they're going to different facts yep. for different audiences. Yep. And then for this group, they only tell you this. And for this group, they only tell you that. And then you're, you're semi-informed because you do know something about it, but you don't know the other half. And the other half, when you put those two pieces together, gives you a whole picture, which makes the government look bad. Yes. Currently, what they're trying to do is they want to pit us against each other, us the people of America, right? right? They want to be it's left versus right, it's Republican versus Democrat, but genuinely what it really is at this stage is it's us versus them and our government is not working for us, regardless of who's president right. and regardless of which party's in power. Yep. The government's just bad. 
I'm going to call it the government's bed. <laughs> Government. Okay. There's a nap for that. There's. That's right. Okay, so now this one, I'm going to make my normal disclaimer. I don't hate all the police. I do think they have a difficult job, but they made it to my list. Oh, uh, yep. So this one's a personal, this is from personal experience. So I put here, please, scanner encryption annoys the heck out of me. Everybody watching should be annoyed that you can't find out what's going on. Uh, just last night, Dan and I were driving through Concord, and there was a big, there was a big uh, issue over, like, I don't know, right off of Eddie Road, down near the river. And we're like, oh, what's going on there? Dan turned on the phone, turned on the app, could hear what was going on um, with the, on the Concord scanner. Because, the because Concord they don't, is they, not right, encrypted, they, right. which also makes you wonder why certain towns do and certain right. towns don't right. because if there truly is this uh, quasi public safety argument why wouldn't everybody made, do it why wouldn't it be right. everyone right. or not everyone and of course we side on the side of open and transparent yeah. government because they work for us or do they <laughs> so i've got scanner encryption surveillance cameras we won't even go there because that'll take up the, oh, rest that of the made show. My list too. um <laughs> apparently manchester police now have drones didn't know that that's a whole nother show um the fact that they seemed, not just Manchester Police, this whole first responder community, this whole, we've created this group of city government employees and their need for all the gadgets all the time. And then they, it seems like we get no response for certain things and over response for others. Um, the, the incident in Concord. One, one might call it a uh, particular show of force. Right, in something like that. Scenarios. So the, my two experiences over the weekend uh, were first on Friday night, uh, Dan and I were coming from the Manchester Walmart back over to the West Sides where we went by Blessed Sacrament, which is on the corner of Elm and, um, and whatever, Queen City, yep. right? And without exaggerating, there were at least a dozen police cars there. Wow. Well, enough that I, I took a picture, and of course the picture doesn't show because you can't see the cars see all beyond the first row mm -hmm. of cars. There, it was like a crazy thing where we were like, oh my God, what is going on at Blessed Sacrament? The cops with the dogs. I'm like, holy cow. So we get, of course, you can't turn on the scanner and find out what's going on. Um, Dan pinged uh, Alderman Shaw to see if she had any idea or if, the, or if she was aware that there was some huge thing going on at Blessed Sacrament. Um, we got home. We tried, you know, I posted a picture on Facebook to talk. Come to find out all of those cars. Because all I kept thinking was, whatever is happening here, there can't possibly be a police car anywhere else in the city. Because I don't think we have... I, I mean, mean, I was just gonna say, really, I, it twelve was, cruisers out at any given time. That was my initial. Time. My initial reaction was, that's got to be every cop car in the city. So that means there's no cops and no nothing being responded to. Although you know, it probably isn't. Well, no, I, I mean, <laughs> we it don't was know, lot. right? So come to find out, we find out on Saturday. This was because, and I've got it on the. I looked up the log. At that was about seven o'clock at night. It's just after six thirty. A, want, a wanted person check at 43 South Elm Street, which is right near Blessed Sacrament. This was for the guy who the day before, the day before, was in Best Buy, grabbed some items off the shelf, and when some one of the store clerks confronted him, he swung a knife at him. Okay. So every cop in Manchester is responding to apprehend one individual, not in the necessarily in the act of committing a crime right then. They had committed a crime the day before. So to me, that's too much. Move on to Saturday. Dan and I um, were coming through downtown, and it was lunchtime, and we were trying to decide where to eat. And I said, well, you know, Carla meant, recommended that shopper's pub. She said the food was really good. Oh, I've never been there. But oh, I thought you said it. wasn't me. Oh. <laughs> somebody told me that it was good. Okay. And yes, it is kind of a sports bar. But yes. So I said, let's go there. So we park, and they, they have, like, parking down the side of the building diagonally, and there's the hotel construction. Sure. So... There's parking spots that are parallel, you know, whatever. So we go in, we eat lunch, had a very nice little lunch, um, nice place. Um, that's funny, I really thought it was you. No, no I go to the um, Vietnamese place next door, but I think because I we talked about okay, it Okay, maybe. So it was good, you know, fine. We go to we go to leave. Somebody has backed into our car. <gasps> was that where it happened? Yeah, so oh. I was like, oh my God, what the heck? So we go back inside. I saw the photo. I mean, yeah, it's serious my, damage, my, folks. Yeah, this like, it's the side door, yeah. and it's like dented yeah. in. So and, we go yeah. back in, shoppers, because I'm thinking I got to call the cops because we're going to have to file an insurance claim because some idiot backed into my car and left so 
the owner, I think it's the owner, the manager, whatever his name, um, Joey, I think he said his name was Joey, <laughs> um, says, oh, we have surveillance cameras. Oh, oh nice. how nice. So he pulls up his phone and in his app and he's, you know, doing this. So I called the Manchester police. So Private I, surveillance, which right. we are for and he because had, that's decentralized. Uh, here's what I'll tell you. You're going to commit a crime. Don't do it near shoppers because they have you on camera. <laughs> um, so it, but the first call was at 10 minutes after 2 on Saturday afternoon. Uh, called to report hit and run, blah, blah, blah. Gave him the address. Told him we were at Shopper's Pub. Um, 18 Lake Ave. Okay, well, we're clearing. Um, so it'll take, we'll send somebody. Okay, fine. So we sit down. I'm like, well, I'm going to order a beer because I'm going to guess I'm going to be here for a while. So talking, the guy's doing the surveillance. Sure enough, he can find, oh, look, here's a car. Oh, look, and there he is backing into your car. And oh, look, here, you know, so. Oh, wow. Oh, look, we can get the license plate. Great. I was just going to ask. So that was at, um, like I said, ten after two. So basically, you've done all. The all I need is it, all I need, need is an officer to come look at the video and take the report and get the license plate and run it through the. DMV so that's ten after two, right? Actually, it was ten, six after two, but that's funny. My call, well, maybe the call ended at ten. So there it is on the police log. Then I called at two thirty three on my phone. I look because you know phone tells you this. Because I was like, is somebody coming? Because it's been like twenty five minutes and. You know, somebody hit my, uh, and do you have the, yes, we have, the, I think we have the plate number. I give her what I think is the plate number. It's a different dispatcher, by by the way. Um, well, they're clearing a fight on Elm Street, and they'll be down after that. Oh, okay. And I do see on the police log that at 2.30, which is right about when I called, there was a fight at Baked on Elm Street. Okay. So there really was. So, so the fight started after 20 after minutes my after first your call, first yes. call. So yes. saying, well, we can't do right. it doesn't but, uh, really but make so time likes it there. So now this is the ongoing conversation of everybody in the pub over how long it's going to take for the Manchester police to Ooh. show up. Meanwhile, our friend Joe Lachance shows up with his girlfriend and his daughter. They eat lunch. They pay their bill and leave. <laughs> I'm still waiting for Manchester police. So I called again at... 3.37. So we're talking an hour and 40 wow. minutes late. At least later. a few beers later. We no, today. we had one beer. <laughs> it was one beer. Because I couldn't. I'm, somebody's, we're going to have to leave. And there's right. going to be cops. Yep. Um, Because I said, you told me that, I was told that they would, they were clearing a fight, but that was an hour, over an hour ago. And we both have now walked to Elm Street and looked up to see if there's massive fl flashing right. light. No, there's nothing, right? Fine. They're going to finish a panic call. And send somebody over. And the panic call does show up on the thing at, what, 3.30. So, okay. So an hour after my second phone call, there was a panic alarm set off at Boston Medical Health Plans on Elm Street. Okay. Okay. I said, well, can you give me a timeline? Because I need to know, you know, as much as I enjoy sitting in a pub, this isn't what I wanted right. to do today. Five, ten minutes. So now we're all watching our clock. Sure enough, this very nice officer shows up. Young guy. His first, I see him wandering down the um, the oh. alley, though, but away from where we're, the car is. And I'm like, hi, you know, over here. Oh, that's because if you look, they the police still think Indian Head Athletics is still uh, at 18. So he's looking for Indian Head right. Athletics, which doesn't exist because it's is not a shopper's, shopper's pub. Is now, yeah. So it's just funny that the police have the wrong businesses. Oh, I don't think. No. That doesn't surprise me. No. In the so list. anyways, they took the log and, you know, we get... They looked at the surveillance and everything. So it'll be interesting to see what comes out of this. I want to see how this process plays right. out. Dan was filing on a claim today and, you know, they're going to supposedly go find the, because they have the plate number. Right. Go find the person. Right. I mean, they can fix my car. Yep. Anyways, so that was my, you know, it seemed like Friday night, all the police were there to apprehend one guy. But on Saturday, it took like two hours to get somebody to respond to a hit and run. Right. There's a little bit of disparity. Anyways, yeah. so that's my police complaint. Okay, you uh, probably can get another one in. So, so I, um, I also have the similar complaints, but I try to frame it as, uh, I guess my festivist grievance is hurting people under the guise of helping them. So we have this trend now that we see all the time where people have lost their minds. <laughs> like anyone who thinks tackling people from oh, behind yeah. for vaping is an appropriate response. Right. Assuming that we don't want people to vape, 
Uh, also, I would recommend everyone go do your own research. Apparently, the CDC got half those vaping death stories entirely wrong. Doesn't surprise me, but, you know, go do your own homework. Don't take my word for it. The, you know, Google can be your friend and your enemy. Yeah. That's probably <laughs> another reason. Um, so this sort of idea of... I mean, even something like the homeless, right? I mean, we know that a lot of the homeless people that started to come up onto Elm Street was because someone, in all their wisdom, went and closed the camps that they that, were living in, yeah. right? Um, something like the war on drugs, we were told. The war on drugs, we have to have this war on drugs, which frankly is just a war on people. And we need prohibition because drugs are bad and they hurt people. But you know what hurts people more? Is when you criminalize their behavior and take people and put them in jail and give them fines and make and them more unemployable. Drugs. <laughs> where, I mean, <laughs> you can find the drugs in jail, where you see this knock-on effect where we have created this entire criminal class and in America more than 2 million people have been incarcerated for drugs now I ask the question could we have done it differently yes I mean we know that under prohibition alcohol prohibition Which there I'm, was violence yes. we saw cartels people were getting harmed and going blind from bathtub gin and all of that stuff right um, what happened when we legalized it all of that went away. The organized crime dropped. Yep. Uh, you don't see people murdering each other in backstreet alleys. Nobody's um, selling gin on the corner. No one, you know. Never. I, mean, you I can never buy see anybody. The little bottles at the store, right? <laughs> I mean, we have figured out. I mean, I'm assuming those little bottles are there for people who need little nips or yeah, whatever, yeah. right? We have figured out a way to deal with people who have issues. You also, because alcohol is legal, are allowed to have social norms where you're like you're too drunk to drive right i'm taking your keys you're not allowed to do this oh this product is good but this product is bad but with drugs we just magically think we're going to pretend like no one wants to do this stuff and then we're going to which is not true and then we're just going to be like we're going to hurt you even more for the right. choices you make so my grievance is this this nonsense of hurting people while claiming to help them if we want to help people you know what helps people is freedom is letting people make choices based on truth so based on real information you know why partly i believe we have the heroin epidemic is because people told the world, America, I shouldn't say, the <laughs> government and DARE told people that weed was like the devil's yes. drug, right? And if you it's do like it, tell, reaper right. madness, like that whole thing, right? And so do you think then maybe other people might have gone, well, I guess, I mean, they lied about weed. Maybe they're lying about heroin. Maybe they're lying about right. bath salts. Maybe right. they're lying about all this other stuff that is genuinely addictive and harmful. So you know what we could do if we want a better society and we want better lives for everyone, which is truly what I want for mm -hmm. the world? Let's start telling the truth. Yep making hard decisions based on the truth, but that way we can actually function in a functioning society. All right, so, I got yeah. a Tanstoffel here too. Okay, the school. Tanstoffel. So that is, there ain't no such thing as a free lunch, only in Claremont. <laughs> Unless you're in Claremont, because... Um, oh, like, but this whole concept of all these people who free. are like, we're just going to have all this free stuff. Free. Everything's free. You know what? I mean, it's like America where everything's free except you. Right. That is where we're heading, folks. Yep. So interesting on the, the, the whole made me go to something. That, you want to what? I had to hand write this one because I had already <laughs> printed my last. Um, snow days. Yes. Okay. Too many snow days. I was... I have snow days too. See, I, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I survived childhood. I read on um, Facebook this morning when I was preparing for the show um, that pub, not public, private schools and charter and city and public charter schools had closed, had already closed. This was at like eight o'clock this morning, maybe even before that, for the day because of the snow. And I leaned over and I looked out the window and I'm like, but it's not snowing yet. So I was like, okay, maybe, okay, this is a little much. 
Then it the city snowing. called. Then it started snowing. Okay, and it is, and you know, and like it's it, coming down. But, it went, but it's still only going to be. No, it was not that much. It was like this much on your car. We haven't gotten it. This is how much we're going to get all together. Really? Yeah. But they've called a snow emergency for tonight, and everybody's going to have to move their cars off the city streets because of four inches of snow. I think it's too much. I don't think we can call a snow emergency every time it snows and make and disrupt people's lives. Because when you have a snow emergency, these people have to park away from their home and either spend mm. money to Uber home or yep. cab home, or you got to walk through the snow and then you got to be out of there at like six o'clock in the morning. I mean, and remember, even you know, we took an Uber from the airport last night back home, and Uber you know, works on spike. On it's demand. As it should. I mean, that's a market force and a market demand. So that makes sense. But a lot of the Uber drivers are just like, well, I'm not driving. Like dangerous and right. gnarly, I'm not going out know? either. So, yeah. so I, 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 I'm not a fan of the snow emergencies when, unless we really have a snow emergency and, and need to, cl and we need the cars moved. Because we have alternate parking. Uh, we switched from every other day alternate right to once a month which is stupid because now you can't <laughs> plow that side of the street for an entire month oh wow think I about it they did that so now if you're gonna parking normally on two, both sides of the street in december you can't park on this side okay so that side they can plow unless they have a snow emergency and then these people have to move but if you had it every other day like it used to be on monday you could plow that side and on tuesday you could plow this side and the, the whole street eventually gets cleared well here's what the snow days that i wanted to say you only is, got about a minute okay is that <laughs> oh you know i i think the unions are just scared that people might realize that you know you could stay at home and your kids could learn at home we have this thing called youtube there apparently in south korea like teachers make millions of dollars if they're the best teachers on youtube and kids just download those programs so if you're a great teacher you should look at starting a youtube channel yes <laughs> That is the shortest I've ever said anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so see, we have stop grievances. Sp stop spreading fear. Yeah. And um, actually, I would like to say one grateful thing is oh, I am I'm very grateful for all sorts of stuff. Grateful to Manchester Public TV for yes. letting us do our shows and coming in here and yep. I and left making my us diary look semi professional here once and they saved it for yeah. me. So yeah, they, I would like to thank Brendan them. and Joe and everybody here at Manchester Public Television does a wonderful job. Um, and he just said <laughs> yay on the screen that you can't see. Yay. yay. Um, <laughs> So this will, this show will play through um, through Christmas. So if you're watching on Manchester Public Which Television, I hope you're having Christmas a wonderful Eve. Christmas holiday. Um, if you're watching it on Facebook, you'll get another one because we're going to tape next Tuesday morning, which is Christmas Eve. Um, we'll have to come up with some interesting thing for that too. Maybe wear silly hats. Um, that's all we got for today. Get out there, enjoy the war the winter weather. It's not the end of the world. You can drive in it, and you will survive. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Peace Bye. Out.